there. <sighs> I've decided to finish this all up today. One more. I mean, there's, there's still one more video after this I want to make, but... So we're, like, almost finished, but getting this out of the way will feel good. Uh, we're doing Grounded Permadeath on Remake when we're finished. Favorite part about making the guides? Well, I... <laughs> I've been miserable the last two weeks, so I don't know. <laughs> uh, I would say I love how just... I don't know, it feels like just my brain is just... It's just constantly going. It's like, this is definitely what I was meant to do for a living. My brain is just on and on and on, and then it never turns off. Jason, thank you for a three year resub. Thank you. Thank you for a 13-month resub. Yeah, we just have basically one more day of work today, and then... Again, I still need to make a video about the differences between console and PC. I haven't really decided how I'm going to organize that and capture the footage, but... I do need to make... So there is one more video after this I do have to make, but... There, it's up there as my least favorite things to do. I always feel good when it's over with, but... Still. <sighs> we can. We can indeed. I wanted to talk about that. I haven't, like, announced anything yet. But I've been thinking about moving the date of Laugh of Us to somewhere in the middle of the week. Either Wednesday or Thursday. Basically on a day where I would otherwise have my off day. Because I found when I'm having a normal week, I take off Sunday because I always take off Sunday. And then Monday we do Laugh of Us and then I go offline. That's two days in a row I haven't played. And then I feel like it takes a little while to, uh, you know, get comfortable again. So basically, I'm considering and thinking of moving it to, like, the day in the middle of the week where I would otherwise just take a day off. Nothing's decided. We're still going to go through with it tomorrow. But I have been thinking about it. Well, this, if I knew I had to, 
make another three or four hour video, I'd probably take off today, but it's, it's highway, tunnel, and hospital. I can do it. I, I might end up opening them on a different day as a result. Still not sure. Gotta think it through. I don't see the harm in still opening it on Friday. Like, say we do it on... Uh, I could change the open submission date to Sunday, like a weekend. Because I'm usually not live that day anyway. Sunday to Sunday would work. I feel like that would work. Yeah, something I'm heavily considering. You'd get an extra day of work out of me. Because <laughs> I always say I don't mind streaming for six days in a row, but there's no way I can do speedrunning six days in a row. I just can't do it. As much as I love this hobby, I cannot put up with it for six days in a row. I need that mid... I need that... Wednesday or Thursday off day to feel fresh over a long period of time. Yeah, I'm most likely going to make that change, but starting with the one after tomorrow. Because I kind of want to start the week off with a, you know, playing. Just play. Yeah, what do we got to do today? Highway, tunnel, and... Hospital. today, but we got like two more videos to make and then we can shift our focus primarily onto permadeath. And I'm going to, well, I'm probably not going to enjoy it. <laughs> enjoy is a, that's a bit of a stretch, but I am, I'm going to be heavily focused on that, which things usually go well when I am heavily focused on a goal. Feel like a nice goal is what drives me. Yeah. that, I say we just, uh, I do want to practice something in hospital, though. Just a quick little something-something. I also think I have to... Yes, I do. Hey, look. This is my setup.
Dude, you know what's weird? I showered today, and I this I would otherwise have no way of knowing, but look at the top of my head. Hold on. There's an indent for the headset, because of course there is. I got like a little bald spot. And I'm letting my hair grow out quite a bit. It's kind of long for my taste. I got like a little bald spot there. Kind of weird. Look, my hair is pretty full, like at every other point. But then there's just that one bald spot. Mm -hmm. No, it's not even at the very top. It's like the back right part of it. Mm -hmm. Whatever. I've never cared much for hair. <laughs> No, that can't be true. I've never had a cow lick my head. Can't be that. Thank you for 32 month reset. something up here. Yeah, well, I, I, I manually run three-minute ad breaks in certain parts of the stream. I usually front-load them so they don't play later, but... Yeah, I've gone on so many rants about how they have to be three minutes long, how... I just need to see something here. Hmm. Oh, did I forget to... Damn it. Stairs. I meant to make a file there. Also, yes, the new Twitch app is actually horrible. Like, actually, really horrible. <laughs> That's funny. I just want to practice up here.
I just want to see something with sprinting here. I want to see like sprinting into this room like I've I've had inconsistencies doesn't work. That's what I was looking for. I was wondering if getting alerted here has to do with uh, having sprint here. I've, I've never really been able to find something that works here with regards to it's so inconsistent. See, I, I've never gotten it. So when I enter that doorway, I just I've never been able to find something consistent besides... Nah, there's nothing there. Alright, forget it. Yes, I'm very relieved. One more thing to check here. Yeah, you don't want that either. I don't see anything. Good. Huh? It's gotta be him. Whoa! He's in here with us. <laughs> like how he fired a bullet as he got alerted. Okay. Yeah. Here's one before I make the tutorial. Here's one thing that's very specific. When you're running across this hallway here, it needs to be straight because if you angle it so you run straight for the door, they see that. But if you run perfectly straight, they don't and you don't want them to see you. Interesting, huh? You want to run like this and then turn the corner there. And from my experience, you cannot sprint here at all. Whoa! He's in here with us! And... <laughs> yeah, make sure you're crouched. 
that's it's just not an area you want to go quickly. Okay. Let's just go. Do I remember how to do tunnel? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Okay, I'm just gonna go. Okay. Uh, Matrix, thank you for 31 month resub. Yeah, I'm just going to go. I'm ready. Hello, and welcome to part 8. Final part, part 8 of this Last of Us Remake PS5 Grounded Speedrun Tutorial. Alright, this one's gonna go over the highway, the tunnel, and hospital, and then Jackson. But, yeah, the last stretch of the game. We made it. You made it. <laughs> Alright, let's get going here. Did you ever think there would be this much to speedrunning this game? Well, there is. Pretty much for the entirety of the highway, there's nothing but, like, a lot of restart checkpoints. Ellie! Did you hear me? Just going the way yeah. you're supposed to go, and what? a lot of restart Look, checkpoints that place you a little further. Me. This is where we get off. Okay. Well, let's go, kiddo. Here we go. Check that everything's reloaded. Breeze, hey, huh? Joel hasn't reloaded his revolver in Take three months. Like this, and sit on my porch. Pick away my sex tree. Yeah, once we're done with this whole thing. The only play, bomb we have left to use is a Molotov, which we'll get the crafting that. ingredients for in uh, the bus depot coming up. All right, restart checkpoint. When you get uh, about where the Next to the taxi, like where, where the door is a little bit open. So, 52, 23. A little bit further. A little bit further. Right there. Restart checkpoint. That places us a little bit ways further. Not a lot of time, but time saved. Every single one of these restart checkpoints, it really adds up. Okay. Really adds up. Look at that. Another city. Another abandoned quarantine. Around this car over here. You can just climb up this car and over. I personally climb it up this way because the climbing animation is... You can step over here, but... See how he, like, stops for a little bit? Wow, that is... That is one slow animation right there. Look at this. You go to step over this... That is one slow animation. Man. See, you don't really want to do that. So you don't want to... If he kept moving, I would say that's good. But, uh... Yeah, that little stop right there. Okay. That's sending us all the way back here. You want to climb, like, the front of the car and then the gate. So you're pretty much always moving forward. Look at that. Another city. Another abandoned quarantine. But you also don't want to climb the top of the car because then that climbing animation's... No. You don't want to climb up right there and then right there. You just want to climb up the short part. Just like that. Okay. Uh, checkpoint as he starts falling. Right there. 5407. This one places us pretty far ahead. Alright, as soon as subtitles pop up, 
we'll be able to check when you make it in at the top of the stairs here. Or a little bit earlier than that. I guarantee you the subtitles will pop up right now. Just a little bit right after um, he makes it to the top of the stairs. Checkpoint places us a little bit further. Where we want to triangle prompt our way here. You have to hit this one. Well, we could use that ladder. And then this one. Here we go. Back to back. That triangle prompt boosting Ellie up here won't happen if you don't hit that. Like, what should otherwise be, like, an optional tri triangle prompt. Ellie. What? The ladder. Come on. Right. Okay. There's that. Now, what are we going to uh, do here? We're going to swap to a gun on the right holster that we have, like, more than one of. And then left holster has to be... The bow. Even if you're empty with uh, arrows. The left holster gun has to be the bow. Okay? The right holster gun can be whichever you have a bullet in. So yeah, if I have pistol, I usually go with that. So we'll do that right here. Yeah, we'll go with the, we'll go with the pistol. And there's three quarters of a rag right there. And as you saw by the little wrench icon, that gave us uh, enough to craft a Molotov, which we're going to use in hospital. Now, I gotta say, that Molotov is optional, but it's very, very nice to have. It's for the literally the last door for the remaining enemies on the second floor. So, it's nice to have. Not mandatory, but it's very nice to have. Uh, and then throw a punch so he has nothing in his hands. And then we're just going to triangle prompt the, the ladder. Oh my god. Right at around there, somewhere in the middle. And then Allie. right here. And then we're going to do a checkpoint when the ladder's just about to hit the wall. Allie. That should be good. Nope, a little further. And I mean, just like a frame further. There's a checkpoint. Restart checkpoint, and the ladder's against the wall, and we can move right away. Because normally there's a period where Joel can't move. You gotta see this. Right, we're it? at the mercy of the game, really here. Just when you walk, you can't crouch walk, so you just gotta just gotta keep going this way. Are you kidding me? Just gotta go. Come on. All right, when we get through that doorway, there's another restart checkpoint. This one actually saves quite a bit of time. But it's easy to forget, because you're just, like, lost in the moment. <laughs> 55, 43. A little bit further. A little bit further. Right there. Right there. This restart checkpoint places us right here. Not actually acknowledging the giraffe, but we went from there to here. So as soon as you can move Joel again, don't go left. There's a wall right there. You want to go back, and right there. Movement's pretty simple. So you go back, and then this way. And then we head upstairs. No giraffe for you. Alright, the door's slightly open here, so as soon as you walk through the door, that's another checkpoint. There's a lot of checkpoints in this part. 56, 13. Right there. Restart checkpoint. The door is already open. And you can't leap over any railing, so you got to go down the stairs here. Make sure you don't triangle prompt Ellie there, and you triangle prompt the door instead. All right, this is a cutscene. And, okay, there's some movement here. Basically, we're going to move a certain way, but you can get pushed by Ellie here. Look. So you can run the entire way and go to her left. But there's no halfway with this. If you angle yourself right, Once you can get pushed like you you can get pushed by Ellie the okay. entire way, but you can let things sort of block you there. So you don't want that, okay? Not even a restart check. There's no point in checkpointing. Um Yeah, we'll go back here and I'll try and Look, get it. If your movement point. isn't crisp enough, then no Ellie can like this. get ahead of you. Not only can she not push you, but sometimes she slows down and then she ends up blocking you. So, yeah, the ideal 
Look. Movement. If I can't get it here, I can show you in a clip. But there's no Just stay to her left, run down, and then get pushed by her. But make sure you don't run into objects. Okay, that time I pushed her back too far. Well, I ain't leaving without you. So then you just go. Sometimes, you know that thing where we can like push enemies out of the way? You, that can happen to Ellie. So you want to make sure you're... If you do want to get pushed by her, you got to make sure your movement is anymore. pretty far forward. But there's no halfway with this. And not moving so far left and right. We'll go wherever you want. Like this. This is good. Okay. This is good. This is good. Well, I ain't leaving without you. Oh, that was nice. So let's go and then we're still getting pushed by her. Still, All right. That still went a really long ways. You can get her to push you all the way up until there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, if, if she, It's not worth restarting encounter if you don't get it. I'm just saying. In an area where there's nothing to do, that is the best case scenario right there. And getting pushed by her the whole way. It's worth a little practice, though. It saves a lot of time. Okay. Um, when we get to the edge of the grass, like right in front of the tree right there, the game takes away your ability to run. But you can crouch. So right about... This there. Place takes me as soon back. as he starts talking, so. crouch walk. That is right after everything went down. Okay. Uh, if you don't have a brick or bottle for some reason, like you got rid of it before, you can pick one up right here, but we already have one, so we'll keep going. We're going to upgrade, uh, we're going to craft a molly later. There's downtime when we're waiting for Ellie to drop a ladder that we can do that. Yes, it will. Okay. Um, when we get, the moment we enter the bus, as long as Joel and Ellie are still talking, you can't run. And crouch walking is faster than normal walking. So we do that here. But, um... We're going to stand up. B basically, we don't just walk out of the bus, we have to climb out of there. And the climbing is faster. Ooh, hold on. I want to adjust my hand cam real quick. There we go. Uh, the climbing is done faster when you're standing. Here, so I'll can't imagine losing make a file there. Losing everything that you know. Basically, instead of doing this, I'm sorry, Joel. That's okay, Ellie. And then running, we're basically going to do. Here, the game we still can't run. Okay, so this is a good spot to show it. No, when we're in the bus, we can't run. So, basically do this. Stand up, and then climb, and then hold sprint forward and jump like that. I'll see where this places me, but... Um... Ooh, okay, we gotta do all that over again. That's okay. Well, this place takes me back. Um, so. As for the tunnel, right after all we end up down. using are I bricks and bottles, arrow, like and we get a free yeah, arrow, on the other side of the bus, but um, yeah, we most of the time don't even end up using that arrow. But you still want to pick it up, and we do a weapon swap to pick it up as well. Yes, it's just on the ground. It's kind of easy to uh, miss. Yeah, when we enter the bus, we're just gonna climb, like so, and then hold sprint forward and jump. Then he starts running. The arrow's right there. Like, they didn't even want you to pick it up. So, you know, weapon swap. Triangle. Gets into his inventory kind of funny. But, yeah, just like the weapon swap that we've been doing. This time it's gonna be different. I just know it. Okay. What do you mean? They're gonna be there. The now, the beginning of this encounter is kind of weird. I'm definitely gonna make a file here because it's... I don't know why there's a question mark here. Like, the game kind of broke a little bit. They're like, thumbnail for the area? Uh, I don't know. That's weird. Anyway. So watch this. We're going to do a restart checkpoint to begin the encounter. But, technically the encounter should begin right here. But as you see, it's placing us a little bit further back. I want to see something. Okay, that's actually interesting. Okay, I'm not ready to do the encounter just yet, but I think I just found something out about this area. I'm not kidding, I think I just found a new strategy. <laughs> you shouldn't really do that when you're when you're making a tutorial. Here, let me show you what the old strategy is. Hold on, one second.
Bruh, I just found a new strategy. How about that? Okay. So this is the movement here we do on the record. Basically, you know, it went from checkpoint to encounter, like it normally does, but doing a restart checkpoint doesn't place us further. It places us right there. But if you fire a bullet, it places you in an even further spot, which is why we need a right holster gun with ammo. However, firing that bullet is kind of... It's kind of weird. You want to land as soon as you can and then fire the bullet. If you land on the ground, it's too far away, so we land on this car. But mm. sometimes the fall animations can take a long time as well. So this is what we normally do right here. Mm. And most of the time, firing that bullet, again, it takes a while because there's landing animations. If you land on the ground next to the car that's right there, there... Uh, there's a similar staggering animation. It takes a while. But I just found out the very moment Joel's feet leave the ground, I don't know why, it could save another second, I guess. The very moment Joel's feet leaves the ground on top of the truck, that's when the encounter begins. And then just make sure you have the pistol approaching this area. And uh, yeah, so here, start timing your pause. Right there. And then the very moment, he just left his, his feet just left the ground right there. The very moment you checkpoint, restart checkpoint, and then it sends you right here. How about that? That's so much faster than landing and then firing. As far as speed run mode is concerned, the timer on the top right, that's a lot faster. I'd say that's over a second faster. How about that? <laughs> How about that? Okay. Let's make uh, the save file right here. I'm not going to go back and do that. That's a much better way. The f falling off of that truck has always been very, very bleh. That's, that's over a second save that I didn't know about until a minute ago. How about that? Okay. Now for the tunnel. Let's, uh, let's just go. There's a lot to this area, but we'll do what we always do. I'll show it off, hopefully successfully, and then uh, we'll go step by step. And you're safe. And just know, when Ellie does drop the crate, they're all alerted to you, but you're pretty much out of there really quickly anyway. Okay, that's the tunnel. Now, it doesn't always play out that way, but uh, let me start off with some things that can go wrong real quick. I'll just, I'll use this. Um, I'll save the footage and then go back. Okay, one thing that can go wrong right, right away is sometimes this runner right here is basically right there next to the trailer. If he is, you arrow him from, from about here, and then you can sprint starting about right here. So sometimes that runner isn't distracted. If he isn't, you, um, you uh, arrow him. This part's pretty much the same every time. 
There's timing for all of this, okay? And, and sometimes there's a runner. Like, you see where that back right tire is? Like, if, if, if we're facing parallel to the car, the back right tire, sometimes there's a runner right there. We have no idea why. But he has very good hearing. So, if you have an arrow, you would still crouch there, maybe a little bit earlier, because his senses are quite good. He would be the closest infected to you. Uh, you would arrow him, and then still do the remaining strategy. Okay. So that's two things of randomness the game can throw at you, even if you throw the brick in the same spot every time. But yeah, let's go over this initial throw. It doesn't have to be in a specific spot. It just You just have to... See, now in this case, we can't have the brick in our hands and then just, you know, mash fire. Because we had to use a gun right before. So when we do this restart checkpoint, you have to hit down and then throw. And then there's a bottle at our feet. And then you can only sprint for a little bit. Okay? This... If you're going to do one thing in this area, master this movement right here. And when he runs across, you have to crouch, okay? Master that movement right there, all right? Just throw it somewhere over there, pick up a bottle, sprint for a little bit, and go right. If you don't crouch, you get that. So if you see him running across, you have to crouch. Now, as for this little sprint here, like, like, master that at least, okay? Just down, turn, throw, pick up. And then, remember the movement we did in the subway in, or like the train station in downtown? After we did a leap through a window, we just did that. The, one tiny little press like this. That's a good spot to do it there. I personally do it a little bit longer, but, uh... Yeah, boom, boom. Yeah, I do it just a little bit longer. Now, notice I'm really hugging the right wall here. Oh, look, he didn't die. And as you see, the string has to be pulled back. Yeah, remember that little flick I do with the arrow? It kills humans, it does not kill infected. The string has to be pulled back. Um, now, notice how far to the right I was being. Okay, that's because, even if I don't sprint, there's a bloater over there. So notice, I wasn't even sprinting. If, if you, like, are a little bit too far left, again, remember, I'm not even sprinting. I'm just, I'm just lightly jogging. I don't have sprint held down. Their hearing, is, you gotta respect the hearing in this area with the infected, okay? You have to respect it. You gotta kinda overdo some things. I'm gonna sprint about there and just be left, okay? Now when you kill this runner, you can actually sprint. Look, there's, there's pretty much nobody in our area because they're all going over there. So when you kill this runner, you can sprint, okay? That being said, if the if that runner is if that oh, once again that was the bloater, so you gotta be you gotta be so far right. You can even do that. Actually, you can actually if the if you notice the runner not go that way, you can jog the entire way. Here, hold on, I'll overthrow it to the left. If this runner isn't here, you can pretty much jog the whole way. See that? You can pretty much jog the entire way. Just make sure you don't spr you don't jog too far. Okay, that runner didn't. Because that runner can hear you as well. Let me throw it. Again, we're taking this slow, but it's important. So I'm throwing it in places this runner won't hear us. See that? You can still you can still get it. So yeah, if you don't 
If the runner doesn't move from right to left, you can stay standing the whole time and get him with an arrow, and then sprint right after you kill him, because by that point, the runners have moved far enough away they won't hear you. And you can sprint all the way up to this bus right here, but you don't want to overdo it because of that. I like to stop sprinting right about here, just for that reason. But, uh, yeah. So there's two things of randomness here in this first part. That runner either staying put or running left. And it does depend. It's not random. It depends on where you throw it. I'm sure if I were to throw it right about here. I don't know who heard me there, but I like to, I like to really chuck it. Like, somewhere over there. And as you see, I play it safe with the sprinting. So there's that. Nice and simple. That's another thing. Remember, you're not going to have awareness indicators on when you do this encounter, okay? They're forced to be turned off when you do an actual run. I'll mention that at the end of this video, but I recommend when you are practicing for a speed run, practice areas with awareness indicators turned off because you can get a little too used to them, okay? Like, for example, that bloater right there made an alerted sound. You're not actually alerted. It's kind of like some audio glitch. There was no alert to be had there, but he still made the sound like he heard you or saw you. Well, heard you, but they're blind. So, um, yeah, it didn't actually happen, though. So, until you hear other infected start being loud, just keep going and ignore it, okay? What else to mention? Yeah, um... We're not really getting the scenario of the runner. Now, if you sprint right here like before, this runner that runs... Remember, we could... Um, if we're arrowing this guy right here, we could sprint right at around here. When that runner's running across, you can't do that. You have to wait until you get right about here. Okay? Okay. So yeah, if, if the runner is, like, really far away... Damn it. If the runner, like, really far away... Hold on. It's tough to get, like, only that one runner to not hear you. So remember, if this runner right here doesn't move... Get him, and then you can sprint right away. It'll work. Okay. And then remember, stop sprinting right about there. And have your bottle ready to throw. If he does move... If he does move... You need to crouch when you see him. Stand up again when he gets out of frame. So you're pointing the camera this way. When he is eventually out of frame, you can stand up again. You just can't sprint until right about here. Any earlier and he would still be too close to you. Understand? Oh, there he is. Crouch. Stand up. Damn it. See, that was that was too close. Okay, so you want to... a little bit further than just off-screen. This is why I wanted to show this off. Crouch. Stand up. That should be good. And go. Okay. See, you just have to uh, start sprinting a little bit later. Okay. That that was a good example. All right. Let's focus on this throw next. So the throw here has to be... I don't do this because it doesn't go far enough. I throw it basically where the, where the patch of light is, but I throw it a little bit higher. I basically aim right about there. So it hits the wall in the back, all right? If you aim it too low, I think it hits there. So I aim it high so it'll go further. It has to hit the back wall, right at around there, okay? Again, as for this throw right here, I just aim for somewhere over there. Kind of far. It's just somewhere. Somewhere in that general area. Sprint only for a little bit. Run to the right side. What's this runner doing? He, he ain't moving, so I'm just going to arrow him. And then I'm going to sprint. Get the bottle ready. We're good. Let go of sprint. I throw it right at about there. And then when I get to this patch of grass right here, 
See, the clicker's right there. When I get to where the grass is right about here, that's when I crouch. And then I start... I crouch walk at full speed, but then I slow my crouch walk to a little bit when he starts moving left. Remember, it's one of those things. When they're, like, distracted by a sound a brick or bottle makes, you can move a little bit faster compared to if they weren't distracted. We saw that in downtown. We saw that in university. And uh, same applies here. So they're distracted. And then I sprint to where, like, the grass is is noticeably in the water. I, sp I jog to about there, and I crouch walk at full speed. And then we'll go from there. Make sure you hug the right side here, just in case. Let go. Throw. It's right here. I crouch, and then right at that moment when he's about to move is when I start moving at a slower speed like this. A very delicate touch with the left uh, stick. All right, that's when I do that, and that's why. <laughs> again be respectful of this area okay see we're not alerted sometimes he just makes that noise okay crouch crouch walk then when he gets right about there crouch walk at full speed then you can stand up and then when you get on the other side of this pillar then you can sprint now don't sprint too far because of that. There's infected right here, but you can sprint. And as for sprinting here, I usually start my sprint right around here. Again, I'm being respectful. You technically probably can do it a little bit earlier, but yeah, that's pretty much the movement there. And then there's the ending. Don't, like, sprint over here. Okay, it's not... It, there's no reason to. It's not worth it. Crouch. Slow. Full speed. Stand up. And if you sprint too early, that's what happens. So I try and time it when I'm right around here. Okay? Now again, sometimes there's a runner right there. Look at that, that's where the runner is. If that happens, and you already used your arrow, you just have to stop your sprint early. Like, I, I approach the area like that runner is going to be there, even though most of the time he's not. And we don't know why he's, he's there. We have no idea. It's random. Um, but we approach the area like she is going to be there. Okay because it's better safe than sorry, especially in an area like this. You're, the finish line is within sight, okay? And then we got this area, so. All right, did the runner hear that? Did not. We're good. Hug the right side here for added safety. Let go sprint, pre-align, throw. Right at the grass here. Crouch. Slow it down. Speed it up. And you get to about here. Stand up. And then right about here. Sprint. And then let go. And then that's about the timing right there. And even if I'm hugging the wall, if you don't stop here a little bit, that happens. So that's why I aim for about one second there. Okay. We do need the brick for later, I'm pretty sure. Actually, you don't. It's right there. Pick it up. You don't slow down getting it. Okay. So, um, yeah. Putting all of that together, we get a perfect performance. And again, if the runner isn't there, you can sprint a little bit further, like by the car. But it's one of those things, 
are you really are you really willing to try and save what is probably just under a second and you've already made it this far on what is hopefully a really good attempt it's not worth it so that sprint you do close to the end in between the second and third parts don't let it last that long just in case there's so much just in case okay this is not the area where you want to try and save every millisecond okay <laughs> get that through your head Okay, so we throw, we pick up the bottle, we sprint just a little bit, we hug the right side. Did the runner hear it? No, he did not. I'm going to kill him, and then sprint immediately after I kill him, pick up anything he drops, get the bottle ready, let go of sprint, pre-align the throw, aim it high, throw it there, see where the grass is? Crouch. He's about to move, slow crouch, he's away, crouch at full speed, stand up. The edge of this thing right here. Sprint. That's far enough. There's no runner, so I can walk for a little bit further. Crouch. Pick up a brick when the bricks are behind me. Aim for one second, then let go. We're good. When you get on the other side of that little pillar there, stand up for one second, crouch. Stand up for one second, crouch. Stand up for one second, crouch. Triangle prompt, he takes over. And then boom. I shouldn't have to tell you what happens if you stay standing for too long. <laughs> Okay. Or what happens if you stay standing, if you start standing up too early. Okay. Like again, there's an indent in the wall. I'll show it to you. We'll do this like one more time. You see that indent in the wall right there? I wait until I'm right about there. Hold on. Please don't kill me. But I wait until I'm about right here before I stand up. Okay. Otherwise, they hear you. One or two more times, we'll go. Run to the right side. Oh, there he is, crouch. Stand up, delay the sprint a little bit for safety. Then go. Hug the right side for added safety here. Let go of sprint, aim it, throw. Oh, it hit the wrong spot. All right, yeah, don't aim it too high. That's not gonna work because that, that one's not distracted. If you aim it too high, it's going to hit that little ridge in the ceiling there. So aim it a little bit lower than that. Okay. Oh, that would suck. Could you imagine you're on like a perfect record pace and then that happens? One of those things. Again, you want to you want to respect this area a lot. That was too high of a throw. Okay. Sprint for a little bit. Run to the right. Did the runner hear us? He did not. Dead. I pick up whatever he drops, even if I don't end up using it. Sprint the whole way. Let go. That's a better throw. Crouch. Slowly crouch. Walk. Then speed it up. Right at about there. Then you can stand. Cut it a little close there. Alright, you can sprint here. I'm going to let go here, just in case the runner's there. And then right at around there, we can crouch. Yeah, um, aim for a second. Boom. Wait until you're on the other side of this little ridge here. Boom. Boom. Mm. 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 Crank could get us up there. Then we're there. Get on up there. Like so many times I've mentioned, I can show it to you, I can explain it to you. You gotta feel it in your hands. You gotta <laughs> your heart's gonna be pumping when you're doing that and you won't have the awareness indicators to rely on, okay? Practice, practice, practice. Great for me. I'm going to move on. And again, if that one runner is there, that's where we use this arrow if you didn't use it before. All right, I'm going to swap to the shotgun and the revolver. Okay. And we're also going to sprint climb these. Don't be standing underneath it, okay? Then we're going to climb on here. Keep sprint held down so we can... Uh, Keep sprint held down so we can sprint this way. This is another spot where if you let go of sprint right now, you're going to lose it. Because we're not technically in an encounter. And then uh, go. And you do the little jump over the thing there. and Because otherwise we'd be swimming. And when we fall off here to dive under the water, you want to hold sprint as he... As he uh, or you want to hold circle as he... His feet leaves the thing that we're on, so he goes underwater right away. So like this. Just like that. 
Then we're going to go. We're going to resurface right away. And then we're going to climb out of the water as soon as we can. You can either climb up this way. Or... You can climb up out here. It's not that much faster. Climbing out of here can be uh, pretty awkward. So I'm just showing you different ways to do this. I personally like to go this way and then just mash X and forward. So he lands on something and then that, but we're closer to this. Again, find what works best for you. Triangle the ladder. We're going to bring it over here. And then as soon as you can, a triangle prompt pops up, hit it. Now as soon as the ladder starts to like free fall, that's where a checkpoint is hit, and that's going to get Ellie right next to us. Okay? So 7, 12, 15. I'm going to time it to right about... Right there? Nope. One more. Hold on. Right there. So, like, literally the moment, like, Joel just lets go of the ladder for it to drop, that's where the checkpoint is. And, okay. Now for this part. Maybe you know this, maybe you don't, but in the original, we did a trick that allowed us to sprint here and pretty much the rest of Tunnel by... Um, doing some weird things with... Get out of my way. Some weird things with this clicker right here. There's a clicker under there. He's always there. He's just hidden. And you can shoot him from here. This basically pretend like this defense doesn't exist. Right. Let me see if he wakes up to this. Nope. Um, so yeah, we used to do a trick in the original where we would shoot this clicker and then hit triangle because if we wake this clicker up triangle prompt doesn't work triangle prompt doesn't work and then we have to kill it okay but there was this trick this is why we want a shotgun there is a trick that we did a long time ago in the original where we would align ourselves right here. We'd shoot it and then mash triangle and the triangle prompt would still be there. Like that. Now in the original, the sprint we would have because there was an active clicker would last the entirety of tunnel. So it would save a lot of time. Here, it only lasts, well, in the original, we could boost Ellie over and the clicker would ignore Ellie. In this version, it will go after her no matter what. It's a little more competent in this version. So, actually, I'll show you. I made a save file here for a reason. Basically, we have to kill it the very moment. Like, right now. And thankfully, it's just one body shot. I, I forget if it goes after Ellie or she just runs away from it. But see how she will not open the gate? Am I actually punching it? Probably not. Nope. But see how she, like, absolutely will not open the gate for us? In the original, she would. But here, she doesn't. So basically, as soon as you boost her over... Here, watch this. Can you sever the leg? Yes, you can, but... Okay, I know it took multiple shots to kill it, but it turns out right after you boost her over, it just takes one more body shot to kill. And then what you want to do is hold sprint here, and then you can sprint the entire way. If you let go of sprint right now, you lose the sprint. But you'll be able to sprint up until right here. No matter what, you lose the sprint right after that. So doing that is faster than just hitting triangle right away and then killing the clicker, but not by as much time as you would think because we still lose the sprint the moment we crouch under the thing. Okay? 
This is why I like the shotgun for this strategy and why I was intent on saving some ammo. Watch how easy this is. See that? The spread makes this of the shotgun makes this a lot easier than using a right holster gun. Because if you're using a right holster gun and you got that small little reticle, you get to the spot and then you got to take some time to line it up. Here it's literally just shoot and triangle. Now watch this. You don't have to shoot him a bunch more times. For some reason he's in this state right now and the shotgun didn't do a lot of damage. Watch this. If you just aim and shoot him right after, he just drops. Now you still need to hold sprint here. Like r starting right at about right now, if I let go a sprint, I lose it and there's no getting it back. So after you kill him, I like to pick up some revolver ammo that's right next to me and then hold sprint and then just wait. Okay? So yeah. That right there is the strategy. For some reason, again, he's probably in like a broken state where you shoot him, you triangle prompt, and he's in a position that he's not really supposed to be. Because what he's supposed to do is you boost him over and then the clicker comes at Ellie like a jump scare. Um, or you kill that clicker before you boost her over. Those are the two possible scenarios. But we're doing a scenario where the clicker's kind of in a broken state. So um, he's kind of broken the very moment until... Like, until the very moment where Ellie lands on the other side. Then he acts as he kind of should, where he's, like, going after her, going after me, stuff like that. Uh, and because of that, when he's in that little broken state, right after you boost Ellie up, but she hasn't landed on the other side, you can just body shot him with anything, and it kills him. A little flick of an arrow, one pistol bullet to the body, anything. Actually, you know what? Here, I'll... Uh I'll show you. I think I have some pistol ammo here. I only have one. Yeah. Well, I, I I think you get it, right? If you have two pistol bullets, like one shot to get his attention and then one more body shot after we boost her over. Would uh uh kill it. So yeah, it doesn't work like a normal clicker, all right, is what I'm trying to what I'm trying to get at. So what happens if you... Well, I can tell you what state he's in. Here, watch this. If, Like normal, like we've been doing, if I shoot him, he becomes active. But watch what happens if I boost her over and then I shoot him. Watch what happens. You know what? I can do this with a pistol. Watch this. It's very interesting stuff here. I'm showing you like how it works with like literally the weakest gun in the game, a pistol. Alright. Give me your foot. Okay. So watch this. From the moment I g gain control of Joel here until the moment the clicker wakes up, he's really weak. Watch this. He's dead. That pistol bullet to the body just killed him. That's not how a normal clicker works, right? <laughs> right? So yeah, when you do that thing where you shoot him and then triangle prompt, he's in that state where one bullet from anything would kill him. One thing I want to check. Well, I don't really have to check here. I can do this quickly. If you shoot, if you try and kill him from... Like, normally, right here, he has the health of a normal clicker, I'm pretty sure. Boom. 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 Yay, yeah, uh, three bullets and he's dead. That's how it normally works. Isn't that interesting? If I was a pistol, it'd probably take five bullets. So when, when, he, when, he, when you do it right here, he has the health of a normal clicker. I think if you boost her over and then it comes after her... I think it's a normal amount of... It might be the one bullet. Whatever. There is a state he can be in where one bullet, no matter what, will kill him. And it usually involves after you boost her up. Okay? So basically what I'm saying is it's pretty much impossible to be short on ammo here. And again, 
This is a good strategy to do. Here, this is like... What I just did is another strategy you can do. Say it's like, you know what, I don't want to bother. I don't want to bother with that, with the technical stuff here. I just want to boost her over and get moving. Get that door open. So there's basically two different ways to do this. You can do it this way. There's no sprint to be had there. So you can do it like that. There's five bullets over there to pick up, by the way. You can do it like that and then go forward. You can climb over this thing. And believe it or not, from the moment you get here, that's only about one and a half seconds slower than if you have the sprint. So this is the way I recommend doing it for the fastest thing possible. It's best done with a shotgun. I will pull out the pistol, though, to continue proving a point how that clicker is very low health. All right, so watch this. You get here. Boom. Triangle. Nice and fast. We barely wasted any time doing that. And then one pistol to the body. And then right about here is when I hold sprint and I just wait. Because we have sprint, I'm not going to climb that thing. And we go. And we have sprint up until right there. That strategy is one, about one and a half seconds faster than the other one. Okay? So that's two different ways to do this. Either shoot with the shotgun or pistol. Here, I'll show you what to do if you have at least two bullets of something. Let's say you have two pistol bullets. You can still do this and you have no shotgun ammo. You can just do this. There's no harm in trying it. Okay, watch this. I'm just going to YOLO it. Eh. Boom. Okay, I did it. Yay. And then you shoot him right after. If you try that strategy and you miss, it's not, it's not the end of the world. You just back it up with what the normal strategy is. So it's like, oh, I missed. Oh, no, I didn't get it. That's okay. The clicker's not active. You can literally just back it up by shooting him right here, and he's still dead. Get that door open. So if you only have one bullet of something, like say you have no shotgun ammo, and you only have like one pistol or one revolver or one something, I wouldn't recommend doing the faster strategy. If you have two of something, always at least try it. Okay? Because it, it is faster. So then like, oh no, I missed. You still back it up, he's dead. And then I, I like getting the revolver ammo, just in case something bad happens in hospital. Revolver's very good. Okay, so that's pretty much all I can mention there. I'll, uh... We'll do what the strategy normally is. Or, I'll... Uh, let me perform it, like, as fast as I can here. Freezing. Yeah. Boom. We're good. See how much easier it is with a shotgun? It's why I stress having at least one when you leave winter. Get that door open. It's really for this strategy right here. And then you could have anything in the right holster that you want. Even an arrow. Boom. Alright, then I hold sprint. And now I'm just waiting. You could even f uh, flick an arrow at him. Anything will kill him. And then we go. And then, like I said, unfortunately, we lose the sprint right here, but that's okay. I like to angle myself in this way, so then he immediately jumps, and then you hold circle again. And when he lands, he's already underwater, okay? So yeah, I climb at, like, a, a pretty strict angle. That way, he's closer to the water. And then I have him jump, and then hold circle, just like that. All right, when you get through this doorway, checkpoint, 714... Right there. There's a checkpoint right there. And this one's worth it. This one puts you from the water. We were right there, and now we're up here. Now you don't want to come into this room. This room that... Get up there. Yeah, there's nothing in here. So you want to go left, and then climb this, and climb this. I need to point out, don't try and save a lot of time climbing this stuff with certain angles and stuff. Because if you try and climb this up, you sometimes just end up jumping. Like, oh, I'm going to be strict like that, right? So when you...
climb up here. I'd recommend putting the camera kind of flat, just so you end up do climbing it, because let me tell you, you really don't want to have... Okay, game's not showing me. You really don't want to have that happen. It's very frustrating. So just make sure you get the climbs right. And then right here, the game's going to force you to crouch. And notice I'm holding sprint the whole time, but he's still doing that. So what I try and do here is I angle him off this way, and as he's falling, that's when I hit sprint. And you see it stands him up right away. So, yeah, from here. Don't angle the camera too far. And then let hold down sprint right there, and then he starts sprinting as soon as he lands. Come over here, we're going to hit triangle on the pallet here, and I have to show something off because, oh, this, this is something, okay? This is something right here. I'll see if I can get it. If not, I can rely on some uh, footage to show you. Let me see if I can get this. You can't leap over the railing. We have to go from the side. Okay, it didn't happen there. Basically, what, what's happening here is the game thinks that the pallet is floor. Where are we? Oh, we're up here. Damn it. Okay, basically, the game thinks that the pallet is floor. So if you jump in, and when you toss this thing into the water, it sinks very low below the water and then floats back up. If you jump into the water too early, the game will think that the height is too big and it will kill you. Okay? That's happened before. I'll see if I can get it to happen one more time, but... Yeah. Basically, there's a checkpoint as soon as you can move Joel, and I do it to avoid that, because then the pallet is already at the top. I'll try and get it one more time, but... Alright, not able to get it. I just... I, I'll, I'll, I'll rely on a video, but just know that this is capable of happening. Hold on. What video had this? It's from a long time ago. <sighs> Give me a second here. Found it. You made it. Okay, found what I was looking for. Watch this. If that pallet wasn't there, he wouldn't have died. See what happens. It sinks very low below the water. So the game thinks it's ground. It's solid ground. So when I jump in... See, it's still resurfacing. And it's surprisingly... I don't believe that they've patched that. But... Uh, yeah, that is a possibility. I will. I, I, I want to try and get that on purpose one more time. See, when you restart checkpoint, it's already at the top. So it's not going to kill you. Oh, God. And that's kind of what you want. You want to... Yeah, you want to end up... This is basically what the strat is. You want to jump. 
so he uh, starts moving it from here. Because then when you move it to the right, Ellie's already facing that gate. But uh, you kind of want to land on it. Also, don't hold sprint when you do this leap. Because then you'll go a little too far. Like, you don't want to... You don't really want to move it this way. Because it's, it's awkward. So basically, if you hold sprint when you jump, you jump further. We talked about that back in downtown. So when I go over here... I don't want him to go beneath the water either. So it's something like... Hold on. Just try and jump... Like that. Yeah, that's good. That's very good right there. That's kind of what you want when you do this. Um, but just for funnies, I want to try and get that one more time. So when I did that clip, I did a jogging leap. It was right towards it. He hit his chin on it as he fell. So... This is the last time I'll try it, but yes, that is the reason I don't do it, um... You made it. I don't do it from here. When I do permadeath, I jump back down on the metal. One more time. The checkpoint, by the way, is like as soon as you can move them. Nah, not able to get it. Whatever. I don't think they patched it out. I think it's still there, but, um... Yeah. Okay, I'll go back here just to show off where the checkpoint is. Yeah, something that can happen. And if you try this enough, you, I think you'll get it pretty easily. The earlier you can get the jump off, the better. And then just sort of jump near the pallet. Okay, so... 7, 15, 40. Right, it's as soon as you can move them. You can, like, aim a gun, too. Right about there. I didn't even see a move yet, but yeah, there's a checkpoint right there. So restart checkpoint. The pallet is already at the top of the water. It places you in the same spot, so you're not losing time. If you end up moving it like this, that's fine, too. Again, we want it to be right about... Oh, God. Yeah, a little bit too far. Try and jump directly on the pallet so he doesn't... Uh... I, I did a sprint leap there. There's some residuals with the leap. That looks good. Okay, minus... All right, that wasn't exactly good. I think you get it. I'm spending too long on this, but... That one was pretty good. Whatever, I think you get it. Even if that wasn't fast, it's faster to move the pal uh, the pallet this way because notice how Ellie is facing where she eventually needs to climb up. If she's facing another direction, like you placed it forward, she has to turn her body and then climb. So you may be able to get the pallet to the wall a little bit faster, but you'll lose time with Ellie uh, turning her body to climb. Alright, this is the moment that we would either swap to our revolver and reload and craft a molly. We still have a med kit for a hospital in case we need it. Uh, left holster doesn't need to be anything. As for this ladder, don't stand right underneath it because then the game's gonna like push you back. There was a little uh, visual bug in the original where if you stood underneath it, Joel's knees would clip beneath the the floor. So I don't think they like changed anything to prevent that. But what they did is they delayed your ability to climb onto the ladder for about maybe half a second or three quarters of a second. And that makes it so that will uh, him clip him beneath the floor, which just won't happen. So triangle prompt shows up like a, maybe three quarters of a second after it actually drops. I'll figure something out. Just to avoid that little visual glitch. It was purely visual, too. All right, we do everything the same here. Like as you're supposed to. Holding sprint doesn't make him go faster. But you can pre-turn, and the very moment you see triangle, you can hit it. All right, uh, you can't leap over the ladder, and like I said, if you have sprint held down the whole time, he'll jump really far. So what I do is right here. When I move him, I just I hold forward, up, upright, and I mash X, but I hit circle when he's in midair, because otherwise he'll do that long animation of standing back up. 
So to avoid jumping too far, just some long animations, this is what I do. Just circle. And then hit sprint right after he lands and then go. And then we go. Oh, I see. Good idea. Let's get to hospital. We've been spending too much time on the small details. Right, there's not much to do here. I will show this off once, though, just in case you are brand new here. In the original, you could actually use the current of the water to speed you up. In Remake, however... It's a really funny-looking, weird death. They added it specifically for Remake. Let me go ahead, and you follow my so don't ever hey, go in the water. You. So you're just going to come over here, land right here, go up there. Basically go the way you're intended to go. Okay? Climb up, and then just do a leap over here. Okay. Come on, follow go. the path, sure basically. I got you. Alright, and once again right here, as soon as we can move Joel, we're going to restart checkpoint. Because he's forced to walk right here. And, uh, yeah, that's that sucks. So, Let's get the hell off as soon as you can move Joel right here. Thing. Right there. Checkpoint. Places you quite a bit further. And we can run right away. And uh, it can be a little awkward to hop on the bus, so I usually just mash X. Alright, there's another checkpoint. This one's kind of annoying to hit, but basically as soon as you hit X to climb this, right there, as soon as you hit X, you can restart checkpoint, and uh, all of this starts. All of this chaos starts. Now, he will actually fall into the bus early. In the original, this is what triggered a glitch. But in this version, if you hold forward and mash X, he will actually fall back into the bus faster. Actually, uh, let me make a file and you can maybe see it. Maybe. Okay, this is if I hit nothing. But if I hold forward and mash X... Okay, checkpoint. That's why I made a file. If you hold forward and mash X... I don't think mashing X actually does anything, but I just do this just because. He falls into the bus earlier. Okay. I actually want to see was when is that checkpoint hit? <laughs> Sorry. I need to see something. Sorry. Seven nineteen thirty-two. I just found another checkpoint. <laughs> That's two brand new checkpoints I just found during this. Okay, as soon as he starts to fall back into the water, restart checkpoint. Let me see if the checkpoint still activates if I do nothing. Sorry, I know this isn't the place to find and test things, but... That, 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 that one checkpoint I did, I noticed it. Alright, let's see, if I do nothing... Nope. Still nothing. And then right there, there's a checkpoint. But if I hold forward, I probably just have to hold forward. Let's see. No, look at that. It, it is. You have to hold forward and X. That's interesting. Okay. So it's like this. You really do need to do this. And then... Checkpoint. Right at around there. Restart checkpoint, and it does that. that. That's actually a little more complicated than you might think. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to hold forward, mash X, and then at some point... Checkpoint right there. I wonder how early it is. Sorry. I'm, I'm, uh, this is, I'm kind of excited for this. This is actually around another second saved. Maybe when he starts reaching. What's the time I have to compare against? 7.19.32... Yeah, it's the very, very moment he starts falling back, like right there. All right, that's pretty easy to uh, to see. 
This is one you can probably just see. You don't necessarily have to time it. So right about... Right there. You can, you can see the camera start to change and go back. When that happens, restart checkpoint, and then it places you right here. Now, from what I've played around with, it's faster to just mash triangle and then just not move. Okay? I've noticed that to be the fastest. And then point the camera up left. If you do nothing with the camera, it won't pan over there. So that you have to do yourself. So after the restart checkpoint, which was literally just found, I mash triangle to climb onto the first thing. And then I wait until he the thing rips off the wall. And then I hold upright on the camera. And the triangle prompts right here, they're optional. I like to time it so it's funny. Here, listen. I do that for comedic effect. You can hold triangle, you, you can skip it, it doesn't matter. Right here, you actually do have control over Joel. You have to hold forward. And this is a funny checkpoint. This will place him like out of the bus. The moment you see a piece of wood underwater flying past you, that's when the checkpoint is hit. You can also use the autosave file to know when the checkpoint is, but there's a visual for this one if you don't want to keep pausing. The very moment you see a piece of wood. See right there? The moment you see a piece of wood flying past you, checkpoint, and it places them like in the water already tumbling. So you can either pause for that or you can look for it. I'm sure the checkpoint is a little bit before it happens as well, but yeah. Okay. Pick up Ellie and then resurface right after right here. You want to do it a little bit later than that so you don't get caught on some debris there, but you can actually resurface very early on the other side of the, the rubble that you see. Okay, now for the hospital. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but the hospital is a lot harder than the original. The main thing that makes it difficult is there's so much randomness. There's so much randomness to it, specifically on the bottom floor. The bottom floor is the hardest, and this is a big reason why we have a med kit for hospital. It's mainly out of precaution, okay? So I'm going to make the file. And we do this area from a restart encounter, not so much because of uh, different, like, differing RNG or something. Well, for one reason. One, it's a tiny bit faster, but it mainly has to do with the beginning of the area. Watch this. So the checkpoint is right is right there when it transitions from checkpoint to just checkpoint and encounter. But watch what happens if you try and do this your first go. Alert. Now the way to avoid that, if you are doing it from here, is to do this. And then go. It works the same. But if you do this from a checkpoint, you can start moving earlier than if you... Uh, you can start moving earlier compared to not restarting checkpoint and you can also n you won't get spotted okay i'll do this entire building once and then we'll break it down How about that? An absolutely perfect bottom floor. Top floor is its own demon, but okay. Triangle, restart checkpoint, places you in the next doorway. I let go of sprint there just to refill my entire sprint. I didn't mean to get spotted there. Okay, that was my bad. That was my mistake. Whatever. We can still save it. We're good. Okay, yeah. Let me, uh... Do that again. 
We weren't supposed to get spotted by that one guy. So yeah, you want to be further left. Okay, that's what we want to do. Throw it at him, and then this, the rest is the same. Now you can imagine trying to get through that last part without a Molotov, right? Like I said, it's not mandatory, but it certainly makes your life a bit easier. Okay, like I said, we'll separate the bottom floor and the top floor. Let's focus strictly on the bottom floor right now. Like I mentioned, if you're doing this from a restart checkpoint, you can just go. Oh, I made a file right here. Oh yeah, I did. Okay, watch this. Yeah, if you do a crouch and then go, that'll that'll make it so you don't get through. But if you do this from the beginning, like permadeath strats, you just end up getting alerted right away. So yeah, that's a way around it. Um, but uh, I'll make the file from... The checkpoint is right there. And what's cool about this checkpoint is you don't have to do the crouch, and you can actually move him earlier than right here. If I were to try moving him right here, it still takes an extra half a second to get him off the wall. So, yeah. First strategy is he's still pressing up against the wall. So, yeah, this is actually a legitimate time save. Okay, here we go. You just go. Now, f you actually want to get alerted by that. Not alerted. You want to distract this enemy to bring him over here. Because if you don't, let's see if I can get it so he, I don't do that. I, I've had it where he uh, doesn't spot me. And I'm just trying to see... Here, I'll do it this way. I'll wait for him to turn. I can't wait for him to turn. Okay. Let me try going over here. No, I, I can't seem to. I can't seem to get him. Just know, occasionally, he will not spot you. Maybe I can. Uh... Okay, yeah. So if he doesn't move, um, you're gonna get spotted here. You're supposed to. Oh, his body's turned. I guess that's why. No, I am positive. I probably wait, uh, waited too long. No, I, I am positive that this happens. If... Sorry, I'm not showing this off the best. But I'm absolutely positive. If you don't get that a little awareness indicator there, and then you just try and do the normal strategy, you are spotted. Okay? And that's probably why. This uh, It's the enemy that's like closer to you that is still there. Okay? So basically, you have to distract this enemy, and I do that by sprinting kind of closer to him compared to further away. Again, it's happened in the past, but if you go over here, there's a chance he doesn't spot you. So I increase the chances of him seeing me by being really far left and taking like a weird route. So I'm just in his line of sight just a little bit further. And then at the corner of this table, literally at the corner of this table, that's when you want to start crouching. If you stand the whole time, he'll spot you out of the corner of his eye. So a crouch does have to be done there. So like, here. See that? So a crouch does have to be done there. Now as for when to stand back up, I've encountered a lot of inconsisten inconsistencies with this part. I remember one time I crouched, I stood back up when I was supposed to, and he still spotted me. So it's one of those things I don't... It's kind of like Tunnel. I respect the senses of the enemies, and I don't try and save an extra millisecond or something. You know? So I basically make sure that he got me. I crouch. And then I stand up right here and do a sprint leap. Okay? As we've shown, doing just a normal leap isn't as quick as doing a sprint leap. And as long as you do the inputs back to back, they won't hear you. Okay? Like you don't want to do this. You don't want to like hold sprint and then leap. It's it, it's 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 as simple as doing this. And even though some of the animations are and inputs are laggy, you'll be okay. Ow. So yeah, there's all of that. And then what do I do with these enemies? 
So, crouch, stand back up, sprint leap. Now, right here, I sprint right here because you don't have a clear path. You don't have a clear path there. All right, these enemies are quite annoying. Here, if you're going to sprint leap. I got visual smuggler. Technically works, but you just want to get some of those enemies out of your way. And the way you do that actually is by getting alerted. There's no way you can get there stealthy. There is a way, but it's a lot slower than just going, okay? So there is going to be an alert here. So you can do this a couple different ways. You can pick up that brick right there if you, like, didn't pick one up before. That's the brick we picked up to slow down at the bloater. So I get alerted, I crouch, and then, uh... If there's no one to throw it at, I just go. But, uh, here's the other thing. If you end up killing at least two, I believe it is, the game will spawn more in your way. Here, watch this. I'm just going to prove a point here. Oh, thank you for that. You are going to... See the enemies over there? I forget what number it is, but I think it's two. If your Molotov kills at least two or two enemies are killed, the game spawns in enemies in the direction that, like, you need to be going. Okay? Let me use a molly again. So it's like, oh, that's a good use for a Molotov. I'm gonna go. Where are they? They're supposed to be here. Oh, there they are. I think those are, like, different... Ow! Yeah, so their extra enemies will spawn in if you kill a certain amount. I don't know if it's one or two. The point I'm getting at is, because we have all this revolver ammo, remember, next to that gate with the sleeping clicker, there were five revolver bullets you can just pick up for free. So I do use a brick here, but what I do is I try and get a kill off and then I'm just going to go. All right, he's not normally there. There's almost always one that takes cover behind the window here. So you can either not brick anybody or you can uh, shoot one. It's up to you. Like, you can kill one and not have any enemies in your way still. All right, I missed. Whatever. You'll see right here, you don't have to use anything. You can get alerted and just run past, and we're okay right here. I'll focus on these enemies a little bit later. But, yeah. You basically want to get alerted, and then just run to the exit. But you want to do it, you know, smartly. So again, this is just something I try here. Like, I get alerted, I try and kill one. And then I just lock on and throw, because you saw there's a brick... It makes sense to use a brick here, because there's a brick waiting for us upstairs. So we can use one on the bottom floor without penalty. But yeah, it should be pretty obvious to say there isn't anything consistent with that part. There is right here, see that? You gotta master that part. But as for right here, there isn't anything that's gonna work consistently, okay? So here's this guy taking cover by the window. And then we're good. If we tried to just go, like, that that's, that's what I was trying to show off. I basically, before, there's the enemy behind me that is alerted, and then the enemies in front of me, they react to me because the alert has started, not because they hear me. So I try and get one of them before, uh, I try to get one of them out of my, out of my way before I uh, time when I'm going to leap over and go. All right, you still need to wait for some of the enemies, the rest of the enemies to move and... I guess, move into position. But, uh, yeah. And I don't know why this is on my mind. But again, just know, sometimes, this enemy won't see you. If that happens, I would do, like, a brick distraction here. I don't think I'm going to be able to show you, but... Yeah, anyway. I just try and get one off. If they're taking cover like that, again, you don't have to get that guy by the window. 
because he has a pistol and he's shooting my back. Okay. Pretty much any other enemy, if they have like an El Diablo or a Shorty, they're they're gonna uh, cause some problem. I notice if that guy that takes cover next to the window I'm at, if it's an El Diablo guy, he almost always hits me in my back. But if it's a pistol guy, he always does that. He's very passive. So yeah, you don't have to worry about that window guy. But it's good to get some enemies out of your way. Again, if you don't use any, if you don't end up killing one, you can still get it. But this increases the chances you'll get out okay. Again, I hold sprint the whole time. I just, I try. I missed. Oh no. They're separating in a good. Ow. Okay, this is bad. Yeah, if I wasn't punched, I think I would have been okay. That that's weird. That shouldn't have happened though. Emphasizing why getting rid of one of the enemies is a good idea. The reason why the shot is so hard is these guys all have armor. Here, watch. I'll shoot one in the chest. You know what? I'll check if any of these guys don't have armor. Actually. Yeah, that guy doesn't, but he's over there. Okay, it looks like I can shoot these guys. I didn't know that. All right. The one that has armor is the one that's furthest to the left. So it looks like I'll be able to body shot these guys. I've been aiming for their legs because I thought they had armor. But it turns out they don't. So, let's try this again. So I just get rid of one. I get rid of him, and then I go. See how getting rid of one just increases the chance that you'll get out of there? It doesn't even matter which one. I don't care. I just get rid of one. All right, we'll move on to the next part, because I think you get it by now. If you end up not killing anyone with a bullet, that's okay. It's really just... It's optional. Again, I'll show you. You can probably get through without using anything. Look like I sprint. I get rid of one that's in my way there. Like, if I'm not using a bullet, I almost always use the brick right there. But, um... Yeah. You're gonna get different scenarios. I'm not gonna show off each one. Just know this is kind of what you have to do. Okay. Crouch. Stand up. Sprint leap. Sprint leap. Hold sprint down. Get rid of one of the enemies. Or try. Oh, there's the guy with the armor. Okay, so sometimes there is one of the enemies. All right, whatever. I think you get it. Um, so we're going to go. Now, what happens here? Look at the enemy in the back. This enemy right here. His job is to run... There was an extra enemy in that spot right there. This enemy's job right here is to sprint right. I hate to say it, but this part's random as well. But one of the enemies is going to run right and then crouch behind one of the tables. The moment you see him run past, you don't want to sprint too early because then he'll turn around and shoot. But the moment he crouches behind the table or the chairs, he has to finish that crouching animation. So that gives you a chance to put the camera off of them so they miss in case they do fire at you, just like in Science Lab, and then sprint for the door. That enemy that bursts through the door, as long as you hit triangle, you're invincible. <clears throat> okay? You are invincible as long as you hit triangle at the end there. So get awareness indicated by that guy. Crouch a little bit longer there just to increase the chances you'll get out. All right, hold sprint. Get him. Uh, this guy isn't. All right, the brick came in handy there. See that? Just look at your surroundings. Okay, so this is it. Let go of sprint. See what they're doing. That guy's running that way. I'm going to hold down and just run. Now, if you're a little bit scared of that, trust me, it, this guy at the end, he will not shoot you as long as your movement is clean, all right? You need to eventually put the camera up to uh, hit triangle on the door, and I recommend hitting triangle early. That way, you're safe. The moment you hit triangle, you're safe, okay? Um, if you want to play it extra safe, but it's not as quick, uh, you can revolver all of them. So. Oh, crap. Nope, we're good. That's what we have the med kit for. If you don't feel like doing that strategy, because it's not 100%, of course. Of 
course, you can get rid of some of them. There's three enemies down here, and they all approach from the left side. So if you want to sprint forward and just revolver all of them, this enemy right here will only spawn in the moment you leave that little tunnel area and just go a little bit further. Here, I'll show you when he spawns in. Top floor, as you see, is quite a bit more simple, so we'll spend some more time down here. Right, again, I like to do this revolver just to get one extra enemy out of the way. Oh boy. This might hurt. Yeah, if you wait too long, the rest of the enemies will, will hit you eventually. But alright, I'll, I'll try this strategy right here. Boom. Boom. There's one more. Thankfully, he only has a pistol. Alright. I'm going to inch my way forward, and this enemy... So right, just on the other side of the door, that's when he walks through. So you can you can go forward enough, like right about here, to be able to clip all of them, and they always all approach from the left side. So if you want to play it, I guess, safer, you can do that, okay? You'll have enough revolver ammo. Remember, you have a bunch. And we're not going to end up using any revolver ammo uh, <clears throat> um, upstairs either. You shouldn't be put in a position to do that, so... Yeah. Again, that's an optional strategy if you feel like it. But the actual fastest thing. How, how simple was that? How simple was that one? Okay. So what I do is I wait right here. Let go of Sprint. I wait for him to go, and then I go. See that? That's what I normally do. And just know that will work most of the time. <laughs> that sounded confident, didn't it? That will work most of the time. Something bad that can happen, and uh, maybe I'll be able to show it off. Something bad that can happen when you do that. It's not 100%, but the, almost all the, time that I tr all the times that I try that strategy, that's, that right there is usually how it goes. Okay. Yeah, that's good. So something bad that can happen. You're waiting here, that you see that guy go, and then you go, and one and one of these guys right here, like he runs this way and then turns around, like he's not supposed to do that. But sometimes that can happen. In which case, I revolver his foot and then I, you know, I, I do stuff like that. I'm just saying when you're waiting by that wall there. And you see the guy run past, but then you see another guy come forward, you're not going to be able to sprint the whole way. So it's something before you sprint, you need to make sure the way is clear. Okay? Okay, let's see what we got here. Oh, God. Well, it still ended up working out. I also don't like pressing up against this wall right here because it makes it a little bit more awkward. Right there. Did you see that? And then, ow. Ow, and you're fucked. See that? That was actually perfectly shown off why you don't want to press up against the wall. It's hard to move around it, okay? It's kind of like this wall a little bit if you just like... See that? You don't want to do that. So what I do when I'm pressed up against the wall, I'm not actually pressed. I'm like right here. So then you can just go. So when I get to that ledge right there, or that corner of the wall, I don't actually press against it, just for that one reason. Okay, corner of the table, crouch. Sprint leap. Sprint leap, keep sprint held down to get alerted. Try and clip off one of the enemies. This guy's in my way, so I'll get rid of him. You're gonna end up throwing the brick at someone different every time, okay? And then right here, I'm looking down the hall, I let go. I'm gonna go. I don't really know what else to explain after that. Again, there's the one scenario, I think I can maybe find a video of it, but like right when I was about to to go for the for the hallway there, an extra enemy shows up. If that happens, you don't wanna wait for him to leave 
but you can't sprint forward either. So I recommend just killing all of them. Okay. Let me see if I can find a video. Hold on, because it's important. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find one, but I'm going to try. I'll just look at old records. <laughs> I'm going to bring up just about every record I have, my own record. Old ones. Just going to try. Let's see here. No, it didn't happen there. Didn't happen there. Didn't happen there. So far, I'm not able to find it. I had a couple more to look at here. Up, oh, found one. Found one. Good. Let's see if I can find another one. Good. I have one. I found one. Good. All right, I found a couple videos to show you here. First one, it doesn't have to do with the, the hallway, but watch how uh, strict, or so, sometimes weird, you can get with this crouch right here. So I just began the area. This is why I crouch a little bit further than I probably should. Here, watch. And he spotted me, and I couldn't believe it. And all I did was... I crouch and I stood up. Sometimes that can lead to an alert. So I, I sometimes here, just out of nerves and just making sure I make it, I crouch walk a little bit further than I maybe should. Just to avoid this from happening. I always remember this one. All right, this is what I was trying to show off and probably won't be able to. So my intentions wow, are weird. to sprint the whole way, but I judge the surroundings. I see him run past and then this happens. And at that point, you can't run forward, okay? At this point, you have to... Go, 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 just go. See that? So that's a backup strat for this. Wow, I had weird. full intentions of seeing the guy run to the right and then sprint all the way through. But then something happened. A guy just shows up. See? So I just go. Oh, there's a guy here. And at that point, you can't sprint forward. You have to kill everyone. Okay? So I'm just letting you know that's something that can happen. Okay. Something that is capable of happening. Maybe it won't happen here, but yeah. All right. Putting the entire bottom floor together. Crouch. Stand. Sprint leap. Sprint leap. Hold sprint. Get one enemy out of your way. Or try to. All right. They're organizing in a way I don't have to do anything more. 
In you go. Reload. Check the left side, but let go of sprint and stay behind a wall. That looks good. I don't see anyone. We're going to go. And uh, sprint when... Uh, or... Um, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, that was good. Um, don't sprint right away if you see an extra enemy and then you got to kill them all. But yeah, that's the bottom floor. There's a lot of moving parts to it, but it can be done consistently. You saw how well that sprinting forward works. It works very well. Because that guy takes forever to, like, you know, he crouches behind the tables, and then he takes forever to stand up and shoot. By that point, you're already past him, so that's what makes it work. Okay, like I mentioned, as soon as you hit triangle, this refills his sprint, and it also just places us a bit further, just like before. Um, I'll make a, just in case, I'll make a different file. Okay. Now, right here. Uh, this this part's optional. You don't want... Uh, I don't recommend holding sprint down the whole way just because you eventually lose it, like, right here. It doesn't really matter. Um, you, um... You know, you can either just sprint open the door or you can let go of sprint right before. I usually, just out of habit, let go of sprint right there just so I know his sprint lasts the whole way. Let me focus on um, what to do here, regardless of what you do here. You have enough sprint to make it past the hallway. You want to get the awareness indicator. No, you don't want to get the awareness indicator flash. If you're too far to the left... Nope, didn't happen. Sorry, hold on. If you are too... If you angle your running too far to the left you will get the awareness indicator flash, and you don't want that. Here, let me see if I can get it again. Like, yeah, that. You don't want that. Main reason being, you just got a lot more eyes on you. See that? You, I didn't end up getting alerted, but you, got, you have a lot more eyes on you. So a way to avoid that awareness indicator flash is you basically run straight. You don't run at an angle. Okay, so when you get through here, run towards that beam. And then go to the left. Now, you don't want to sprint right here because of that. Because of that. So when I get through the door here, I let go. Now oh, you can break the glass. How about that? Uh, if, you, if you die here, a restart encounter, I believe. Yeah, it places you right here. And if you... I guess you're okay if you sprint here. Yeah, you're okay if you do that. I think, again, if you sprint at an angle. Yeah, it's pretty much the same logic here. See that? If you sprint forward, they don't spot you. If you sprint at an angle, they will. So you don't want that. Um, but yeah, if you do it from here. Again, my experience sprinting through this door. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But again, you, you don't want to pick this moment to be testy. So I... Um, yeah, so I... Oh, that's another reason right there that I don't hold sprint when I do this. There's a lot of momentum here, so if you, like... If you do that, there's some, like, forward momentum, then he has to go back. So I usually face the door and let go of sprint. Just so he's more direct, so I actually do that on purpose. It gets a sprint back, but yeah. So doing all that, I sprint straight, and then I turn, and then I let go of sprint right here. Now, I don't approach it this way for that one reason that guy right there so when I'm coming through here and I'm jogging I pretty much go here that guy will always be looking left when you they're on a cycle that guy looks left for a really long time okay so basically when I sprint through here It also might be a way to avoid this, but I immediately go left right here, and then crouch. And then, if I didn't use a brick downstairs, there's one right there, but yeah. And I pretty much uh, crouch as soon as I get in the doorway, so. Let go of sprint, hold it back down. We're going to go forward. Remember, we're really going to go forward here. 
to avoid the awareness indicator. I let go of sprint right here just to avoid getting alerted. I hang left here just to get fewer eyes on me. I crouch. I pick up a brick if I don't already have it. I throw it at this guy, and then I sprint. And there's a brick right here. I pick up there. I swap to a molly. I crouch, and I throw. And then... I will throw the brick at that guy far to the left if he's not burned up by the fire. Now, as for the molly throw, sometimes I throw it really far. I think the best spot to throw it is on the table itself, on the top. That way, people that are crouched, I think, will still get hit by it. Um, but yeah, the molly throw is more just generic. You don't want to spend time like lining it up. You basically turn the corner, crouch, aim, and throw, swap to a brick, and then sprint leap, and then crouch. That way you're crouched. And um, yeah, uh, if that guy in the back isn't... The guy in the... Like, for, like to Joel's right, if he isn't burned up by the molly, you have to brick him because he has an El Diablo. I have a clip to show you of um, what happens if you... You know what? I don't have to cut for this. I have it. I have it right here. Hold on. Yeah, you know what? Give me a sec. So this clip is from, is uh, the end of hospital. Just watch. <laughs> so it wasn't. Here, watch. It wasn't one bullet to the right that got me. It wasn't this guy right here. He shot me with an El Diablo. So right, wait for it, right there. That didn't kill me. There was another guy with a shotgun way over here, really far away from me. You don't have to worry about him too much. You have to worry about him if you like stay crouched behind here for too long, but yeah, he got shot in like back-to-back -back <laughs> animations, and that ended up getting him. The point I'm getting at with this, when you get right here, you want to crouch behind here and make sure this guy is incapacitated, because I would have lived if I if I had done that, okay? So, yeah. It is very tempting to go as fat, to want to go as fast as you can there. I wouldn't recommend it. I wouldn't recommend it. Oh, don't wear this indicator. All right, you know what else you can do here? You can do like downstairs. You can sprint and then crouch. We should get the same RNG alignment here. Remember, hang left, crouch, get the brick if you need it. Use the brick on this one and then immediately go. Boom, Molotov, crouch, throw, brick, go. And then we're good. Okay, I technically threw that brick through the through the table, and then it hit him, but it still hit him. If I had done the leap leap, he probably would have died, because that enemy right there has an El Diablo. Okay, so it's it's weird. Something else to mention. Yeah, that's much better. Remember, let go of sprint. If you've taken a shit ton of damage on the bottom floor and you have this much health, this is the timing you want to do it here. Basically, start healing right here. You would be healing, 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 healing. You pull the strap, and then you get the molly, uh, the molly, the the brick right there, and then go. Crouch, throw, brick. Oh, that got that got him. So I'm just gonna go, and then we're good. Ow! You would just go. So here, I'll show the timing off a little bit better. Here, I'll hurt myself.
I like that animation, just like, ah, shit. Okay, so sprint forward. So let's pretend we took a lot of damage on the bottom floor. When would we time the medkit usage? Right about now. So then we get the brick right away. And then go. Oh, damn it. Oh, I, 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 I forgot. I'm doing it from here. Here, you know what? Let's do a combo. Let's lose the brick and lose the molly. Okay, so here we go. So the timing for everything. Without losing barely any time. S using a med kit here barely wastes any time. So you get ready and then use it right around here. Crouch, pick it up, and the strat's still pretty much the same. See that? So yeah, that's around the air part where you want to use a molly uh, or the med kit. One thing I'm still thinking of though. If I were to use the med kit without hitting crouch right before. Let me see, does it stand him back up? No. Okay. I was I was I was wondering there, like when I was practicing it, I was like hitting crouch then then heal. No, if you go to heal and then just start moving forward again, he's already crouched. So yeah. Again. Took a lot of damage on the bottom floor. Go right through here. Start up your heal. I would say right about there. For like maximum speed. You can pick it up a little bit behind. You can turn the camera and pick it up right there. You get it and then you go. Uh, you want to put the entire hospital together now? Because that's pretty much all there is to mention. Here, just for shits and giggles, let me try and do this with just a brick. Watch my back. Oh god. See, that's what I mean by... It's technically possible to do this with just a brick. But you see how much more helpful the Molotov is. So if you... If something happens where you just don't have the crafting ingredients for a Molotov by the time you get to Bus Depot, it's not the end of the world. You can still do this. The only thing you have to do is not leap over the window right away. So I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting. See that? And then you go. It's still probably not going to be pretty, but you end up going. It's almost the same speed. That's what I mean. It's, it's, it's purely optional. Okay. I'm going to try, like, the entirety of hospital and just see how it goes. Sprint right away from the restart checkpoint. Get him to spot you. Crouch at the corner of that table. Sprint a little bit longer. Stand. Sprint leap. Sprint leap again, but hold sprint down. Try and get rid of one of the enemies. They're moving to a certain spot. If they do that, you can go. I wouldn't worry about ammo at this stage of the game. All right, I'm going to let go of sprint and stand in front of the door. I'm going to look left. What are they doing? Running past, I don't see anyone else. I'm just going to go. Hit triangle early. And that works a lot more frequently than you might think. Alright, we're going to head upstairs. If you did take damage and use uh, a brick. Hold on. Triangle, restart checkpoint. The very moment you hit triangle, you can restart checkpoint. Saves a lot of time. I like to let go of Sprint to get some Sprint back, and uh, he opens the door a little bit cleaner, I think. Sprint forward, so you don't get the Awareness Indicator flash. Let go of Sprint right here to 100% completely avoid getting spotted. If you had to use a med kit, you use it right now. Hang to the left, so that guy doesn't spot you. Get a brick if you don't have one right here. Throw. Go. Get the brick. Swap to the molly. Throw. Brick. I don't know if this guy got hurt. I don't know. I'm just going to go. I'm just going to go. Okay. If you wait behind that table for too long, the sh you're eventually going to get shot. I wasn't sure where that other guy behind the desk was or the table. When I enough time passed that I noticed he just wasn't there, I just went. Now, that was full health shotgun blast to the back. Okay. 
and I don't think the shotgun guy was that close to me. So you can't, you saw what happens if you just go, go right away, you end up getting screwed. But if you're looking, if you crouch behind there and you're looking for an enemy for too long, you're going to get shot in your back a lot. So we can actually, and after that point, the run's pretty much over. So the health doesn't matter past that point. But we'll do this part a couple more times. Again, you'd otherwise heal right here. Make sure you're approaching this door to the left. And again, you can do this with a, just a brick. If you wait to leap through the table, uh, the window here, that got nobody. I'm just gonna go. Oh. Okay, that was. Uh, first of all, that was a terrible throw. I underthrew it, so it ended up hitting nobody. It either has to hit the top of the table or completely on the other side to get that one guy. So that was just a horrible Molotov throw. Okay. Make sure one thing you can't do is underthrow a Molotov if you are going to use a Molly here. And just like before, I like to hit triangle really, really early. But yeah. Um, dare I say it, it might actually be more consistent to just use a uh, just a brick. Based on what I've seen here. I know I'm just kind of fucking around here. Tutorial's pretty much over. Just showing some things that can happen. Here, watch. If I just use a brick, I'm just going to crouch here, wait a little bit. This is interesting. This is probably going to hurt a lot. Or only hurt a little bit. So, it, I think you get it. If you're using a brick, delay when you would normally leap through the window. Okay? If you're using a molly, you can risk it a little bit more. But yes, this is also why we uh, save a Molotov. Because... Uh, you don't have to be too bright to know. Uh, having full health for this portion right here is uh, pretty important. Good molly throw. See that? That's about as fast as you can do that. Good molly throw. And I recommend... Uh, I don't think I mentioned it briefly. Uh, mentioned it. After you throw the molly, you want to make sure you swap to the brick before you leap through. Because then it's otherwise just not going to be in your hand. Okay? So that's pretty important. Eh, I'm done explaining that. Because if you, like... Actually, no. Hold on. From the moment I throw... Here, I'll just throw Molly and then swap to my brick and see how long he... You see that right there? You see that? Here, I'll do it crouched. Watch. I'm going to mash down after I throw the Molly and see how long it takes for him to swap. See that? It's a little bit faster compared to being standing, but here, just watch. See how long it takes? That's the reason right there. You want to make sure you swap to your brick before you leap you le you leap over that last window. It's a little it's done a little bit faster when you're crouching though. So the moment you like see the heads up display on the, on the on the bottom right, that's when you can go. You do not want to leap over that table. A uh, window, I mean, without anything in your hand. Yeah, this guy's right there is the culprit that usually spots you. As soon as you brick that one, just go. Ow. Oh, good throw. I'm going. And then triangle very early. And boom. Alright. I'm done. We're gonna keep going. Nothing weird here. Just hold sprint and forward. All right, there is actually a strategy here for the last part. So, sprint the whole way until you get in here. So this is how you're supposed to do it, but the movement is kind of specific. I won't let you take her. Like that. That's how it's supposed to be done. But the movement, again, can be a little bit finicky, a little bit tricky. Wow, all the tension is lost now that he can't sprint. So if you noticed, um, 
I was aiming and shooting. The game doesn't let you shoot him right away. Or square prompt, for that matter. You want to shoot him with a gun, okay? It, it takes too long to hit square and stab him with the scalpel, but... The game doesn't let you aim, aim and shoot right away. So what I do is I get as close to him as I possibly can, and then I just go like this, so he'll shoot him right at, as early as he can, and then I immediately sprint, fall, uh, turn the camera, and hit triangle, okay? That being said, I don't think this works as well if you're standing. I don't think you're allowed to sprint if you're standing. I'm going to try that now, but I don't think that's how it works. The game disables your ability to run here, so I crouch walk up to him to make sure I'm right in front of him. But I don't think you're any faster if you're standing when you shoot. Doctor? What are you see. doing with me? I won't let you take her. No! no, see that for some reason you can't do that, but when you do it from a crouch, when you do it from a crouch, it's okay. It's 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 kind of weird. So when you shoot him, you got to make sure you do it crouched, okay? That's the weird thing. See, as soon as you move, crouch, get up to him, aim and mash fire. And then the moment you do, start sprinting. Uh, put your gun away and uh, hit triangle. Sweet like Jesus. this. Doctor? What are you doing in here? I won't Boom. Let take her. No! And like that, cutscene begins and then you go. I'm going to mute this part because this is another track that the game loves copywriting. Yeah, uh, the skip cutscene places you facing forward, and the not confusing thing, but it's very hard to navigate Joel here. He, his movement is very weird, so what I usually do for added consistency, I'm almost always holding forward, and I just adjust the camera. It's very, very easy to, like, bonk into stuff. So I move the left stick only left and right a tiny bit, but I more so just hold straight and move the camera. Kind of like when you're controlling the horse. I always just sprint and hold forward, and I just move the camera. Because Joel's very awkward to control here. If you're not holding sprint, he doesn't move as quickly, so you need to hold sprint the entire time. He will literally go to a slow walk if you're not holding sprint, so you gotta hold it the entire time. Okay, I think that's long enough for the music. And then uh, we're pretty much done here. We're just focusing on some small stuff here. So yeah, if there's one thing you've noticed uh, with hospital, uh, cutscene begins here. And then another one right after that. For hospital, make sure you have full health on the second floor which is the whole reason we save a medkit for that. So the two medkits we have in this run, we pretty much use for Sniper, because I like having full health for Sniper, for the enemies on the bottom level, and uh, for the second floor of Hospital. Okay. Okay, right here. Just stand in front of the... Uh, just right. stand right here. Even if you're right here, you're not gonna... It's actually kinda pretty, ain't it? Oh, you can knock Joel out of the way. I didn't know that. Okay, don't get in Joel's way. He takes the right side, you take the left. I didn't know that. Oh, man. Right. Now yeah, just go you. right there. Okay, anyway, this is the movement you want to do here for... It actually doesn't matter how fast you go because you can't overtake Joel and he has to climb up the, the last climbable thing here before you do. So you actually can't go super fast here. You do need to hold sprint, though, because otherwise it's a, it's a walk. So you need to hold sprint. So we're going to leap over the log here. We're going to go around to the left and then climb up from here. This is about as fast as you can move here. Just do that. Get close to Joel. He has to climb up first. Now there's going to be a checkpoint. As soon as Ellie starts climbing... Uh, start checking the autosave file. 2758. Just keep checking. There we go. Checkpoint right there. Uh, restart checkpoint. Okay. Now, this is... There's actually a time save here. This was discovered recently. You can actually speed up Joel here. here so watch this. If you just follow him... Right down there. He doesn't necessarily move very quickly. 
See, look at him. He's jogging, he's jogging. He takes a wide turn. He jogs across the that. water a little bit, and then he goes for the log. Watch this. If you go over here, and yeah, you man. go in the water, Joel will, like... Did you, see, did you see him go across the water a little bit? At the most, I'd say this saves about 1.3 seconds, I think. But yeah, what you want to do, you can't just fall off right here. Right about where those white flowers are, that's where you can go over here. Fall off, get in the like, get in the water, and then you see, he, he, he kind of just moves a little bit quickly there. I haven't seen how to get him to move at his fastest, but I pretty much just climb over the log, I look at him... And then I go, that's fast that. That's fast enough. There's something slightly faster than that, but basically your movement is just going to be down there. going down here, moving over here, leap over the log, get in the water, and then just he'll be zooming. He can go faster than that. Hold on, one more time. You know, there's no reason down going there. as far left as you can. Just go over here. A little bit further that was now. a good one. Whatever. He's noticeably faster if you do exactly what I did right there. Okay. Here, we're going to climb up here. We're going to stand right about here and then mash triangle. Right about here. I got you. Give me your hand. Smash triangle. All right. That right there is where the timer stops. You'd skip cutscene. And then this goes. This doesn't count towards the time. But you can quit to main menu right from there. And then, because you, you were using speedrun mode, it would take you right here. It takes you right here. Under extras, there's speedrun recap. And this is where it would take you to let you know if you PB'd or not. And then when you hit back, it would ask you, do you want to save your times here? Do you want to hit yes? And then it saves all your information. So my PB for this category is a 239.01. And it was very good. <laughs> With the addition of a couple of these new restart checkpoints, uh, I could uh, I could have gotten it down to 238, but there's unfortunately when I did this run a few weeks ago, there was some information we didn't know at the time. So, yeah, there was like three new restart checkpoints that have been found since then. It's kind of hard to read these numbers, but yeah, um, you can use this to go over if you'd like, but. Yeah, and this is where, after the run is over, I mentioned at the beginning, but when the run is over, this is where you want to go, like, okay, gameplay modifiers are turned off. Um, lock, no, where is it? Lock on aiming is, no, uh, sorry. Yeah, you show gameplay modifiers are turned off. I don't think you have to show them for grounded, but heads up display, awareness indicators normally in a run are turned off. If you did a run like this, it wouldn't be accepted because awareness indicators on grounded have to be turned off. Uh, accessibilities, there we go. Lock on aim has to be off. High contrast display has to be off. Enhanced listen mode off, infinite breath off, skip puzzle off, and combat accessibilities off. If you forget to show this stuff, the run won't count. Okay? So you gotta show that off. <sighs> so yes. That is The Last of Us Remake on PS5. That's every bit of information that I know about uh, the areas. Hospital could have been explained a little better, but basically, from the moment from, from the moment you get to the spot where you have you have to go loud and those enemies like disperse and you run towards that little tunnel, it's not going to play out the same way. That, that, that's really how you would describe most of this run. You can do an area just like I did, and it's not going to really play out or work the same way that it did for me. There's a lot of different... There's a lot of variance for how an area is going to turn out, turn out based on what you did, okay? Which is why practice is so important. You want to see what the game can throw at you and how you handle it, what you need to do in case this happens or this happens. The bottom floor of Hospital is, is just like a perfect ex example of that. I'm going to I'm going to shoot a guy in the leg. Are they going to aim at me? Or are they going to come towards me? If you see them where they take cover, one guy takes cover behind the pillar, one guy takes cover behind like next to the window you're at. There was one instance he punched me cuz I took too long and then you get to that little tunnel area. Can you sprint through or will an enemy show up and then you got to kill all of them and then it's, there's so much. There's there's so many different ways the same area can play out. So 
like I mentioned for most of this tutorial, I can explain it to you, I can show you, but you have to do it yourself and practice these areas individually to really get a sense of how the area works, okay? And you'll develop muscle memory to know exactly how much ammo you need for this certain area and stuff like that. And I always say your biggest teacher will be failing, okay? If you fail an area because you didn't have enough supplies, well, then you're going to have to rework the first part of the run in order so you do have enough supplies for this area. Okay? I, I have... There were, there were a lot of attempts where I was losing run... I was losing a lot of runs to the tripwire part of Financial District. I was losing a lot of runs there because... Uh, trippy. I was losing a lot of runs there because I ran out of arrows. There were so many attempts where I was not getting an arrow back. So many attempts. Eventually, it was killing almost every run that I did. So you know what? I'm not relying on luck anymore. Let's change something about the area. So I, f I came up with the strategy of using one pistol and one arrow instead of two arrows. And that's been a lifesaver for the run overall. And uh, we incorporate that strategy. And if you get an arrow back in either Hotel or Billstown, you can use that arrow in place of uh, a rifle bullet at Henry's. And then... That will save you a rifle bullet for ranch, which, as you saw, sometimes we need that extra rifle bullet in case we miss a shot or something. So it, it all ends up working out. Uh, but yeah, I think I mentioned in the very beginning, the hardest thing about explaining exactly how to do a run of Remake is there are multiple ways to do an encounter. In the original, it was pretty much a one-size-fits-all kind of thing. You have to do it this way or else it's just not going to work. Remake, there's a lot of different ways to do an encounter, and a lot of different ways it can play out, so that's why this tutorial took so long to make. I tried to include every scenario in every area possible. But yeah, that's it for this video, Highway, Tunnel, and Hospital. Uh, someone's asking why exactly do awareness in indicators need to be disabled? Because, here watch, technically right now awareness indicators are on, I mentioned this in the in the first video, but I'll just explain it here as some closing thoughts. If you were to do another run on grounded, you have options enabled that we recommend disabling for grounded. Would you like to reset these options to their default values? Everything I just mentioned that needs to be turned off is pretty much what the game wants you to have turned off. This is basically the game saying... To experience Grounded in all of its glory, we recommend turning these things off. Would you like to turn these things off? Yes or no? Now, in this case, all I have turned on that the game wants me to turn off is Awareness Indicators. If I turn them off and I select the exact same thing, see that message isn't there now. If you hit Yes, so I have it turned back on, New Game. It's not even there for Survivor, I think. No, it's not. It's uh, grounded. That this pop-up, nope. This pop-up right here is specific for grounded only. See, it's specifically for grounded. We work that into the speed run. Okay. Yeah, that's one thing I will mention here. I do recommend practicing using awareness indicators. That way, if something consistently goes wrong, you know what enemy was there to ruin your fun and how to fix it. So when you're practicing and routing yourself, if the timer isn't on, I recommend turning on awareness awareness indicators to know exactly how an area works and what goes wrong. When you're doing an attempt though, it has to be turned off. That's just part of the rules that we made. Okay? It's just part of the rules. And again, that's specific only for grounded. If you're doing very light, you can have a lot of things turned on. Not everything, but a lot of things. And, um... Yeah. If you practice too much with awareness indicators on, you kind of end up relying on them. Okay? Before you're finished practicing, I do recommend... I do recommend... Practicing the area with awareness indicators turned off. That way you can develop some muscle memory to not rely on it. Very, very important. But yeah, and if you have a little bit of extra money, I seriously, legitimately do recommend 
turning the unlocked frame rate mode on. And to do that, you you need a to capture it. You need like a certain capture card. I personally have the eight, the Elgato HD sixty X. That's like the their first capture card that allows capture and pass through of anything higher than sixty frames per second. Okay, I think it allows variable refresh rate pass through. And uh, you also need a monitor to be able to support that. Okay, but I cannot tell you what a difference it makes. I think it lowers the resolution a tiny bit, but you, you you can't tell. And, oh man. Just performance, like this is 60 FPS. This is like anywhere from 75 to 90, and it makes such a difference. Not visually, to the point you can't really tell a difference. You feel it. You feel it in the controls. It's so much more responsive it feels like there was a tiny a, a teeny teeny tiny bit of input lag or input delay it just it it vanishes when this is turned on it's so buttery smooth highly recommend it um you don't need an hdmi 2.1 thing to get this to work you just like my monitor it's a it's an acer predator 4k 144 hertz that's if you overclock it normally it's like 120 hertz but it doesn't have any HDMI 2.1. It's just HDMI 2.0. But um, yeah, I think that's about all I have to uh, to mention. This monitor supports variable refresh rate. I think that's the main that's the main thing. But maybe the capture card circuit. I guess so. I guess so. Maybe it does. From my experience, you don't really need a um, you don't really need HDMI 2.1 to get it. Maybe if I just had it like PS5 to monitor, maybe you would. But whatever, it's still I'm still recording here. I can't really think of anything more to say. If you failure will be your best teacher with regards to speedrunning, but hopefully. If you don't watch the whole thing, you watch a part of this entire tutorial where you're struggling, and uh, hopefully it helps you. Hopefully it helps you. Okay. Um, yeah, that's it for me. Hope you learned something. Hope you enjoy. Hope you end up using this. And yeah, any questions on any any of the areas, any of the videos, I or someone else will be glad to answer. And uh, yeah, happy speed running. Take care. Bye. That's it. Ah. <sighs> oh, I see it. Yeah. Literally four minutes ago, there was a trailer for the next season of Last of Us. Coming in 2025. I need to know when it's coming out exactly. Let's see. Hold on. You guys get a you guys get a sneak peek here. I know it's on Twitter, but just just go with me here. Let's see. Uh do I have the turned off? Yeah, I turned it off. Okay, let's see. Did you hurt her? Then what? What did you do? I saved her. Who's that? Then what? It's only 20 seconds long. What? Who's that supposed to be? I'm not as good with Last of Us 2 lore as I am with original Last of Us lore. Who's that again? Because that's not Maria. Must be someone else. That's not Maria. Yeah, they replaced Tommy in that scene. 
Seraphite leader. No. At that point in the timeline, Seraphite leader's dead. I ass No, th that looks like the Tommy and Joel conversation in the very beginning of the game. They just replaced her. They just replaced him with her. Maybe Maria isn't the leader of the... That's Maria in Season 2. <laughs> no, that's not Maria. Did it say... I wasn't looking. Was there a date given? Let me look again. Absolutely nothing. It doesn't even give a date, just sometime next year. I'm timing it because I want to grind part two as the show is releasing. The actor for Isaac looks identical. Didn't they use the same person? Jeffrey Pierce? Aren't they using the same person? Yeah, so there you go. Well, that'll be cool. It's a shame that was only 20 seconds, but... I'm optimistic that the show can do part two better than the game. <laughs> I know. Oh, it's a masterpiece. It's the best game I ever played. If you ask me, I'm a little more harsh on it. You know. Not just gameplay-wise, either. I just... Didn't quite do it for me. That's why I don't talk about it too much. I don't hate it. I just... Wasn't... The plot lines they decided to go was just never for me. Then I go back and play part one. I'm just like, ah, oh, that's nice. That's nice. Gameplay-wise, I don't know if they could have done a better job. Anything specific? Not really. I don't know if I was ever prepared for a Last of Us game not being about Joel and Ellie, which is kind of what it was. I always feel like, you know, Joel and Ellie individually are nice characters, but when they're, like, together... That's when uh, it just 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 shines, you know. Because I always felt like this wasn't a franchise yet; it was just one game. Second game just kind of changes the dynamic, and then it's like, where do they go from here now? You know, <laughs> I just don't know if I was only a second game in. You do away with who like the real main characters were. I never, I just never. I, uh, how many times in the last four and a half years does it have to be said, you know? <laughs> Part two is literally four, four years and two months old. How many more times does it have to be said, you know? Okay, I still have a video to make. I don't know how I'm going to make it, though. <sighs> I'm not making it today. I'm done for today, but... <laughs> I wish I knew when in 2025 it was coming out. Because for the entirety of the season's release, I want to... You know, I, I want to be running part two. It could be Ellie percent, could be Abby percent, could be full game, could be permadeath. I just want to do everything part two at the time it's releasing. And I... Yeah, like my next project is going to be part two. Just doing... We didn't really do a lot of remastered... We didn't really do any remastered attempts. We pretty much did two months of no return, remember? So I do want to give uh, I do want to give it some time, but <sighs> yeah.
how much time if we are eventually going to go back. That was kind of the last bit of part two single player that we did. That stupid that stupid leap over the, the stairs and then she died. Yeah, that was kind of what we left it at. Yeah. That was something, wasn't it? When when part two remastered dropped, we pretty much just did no return. We pretty much just did no return. I remember we played a long time with some of the areas that were different as a result of the remaster. Capitol Hill, that cornfield part, the brewery. Ugh, God. Yeah, attempts took a back seat and it ended up just being like... These areas are different. What do we do now? <sighs> yeah. Oh, I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will. Did everything. Nothing part two related makes me a better factions player. Playing factions makes me a better factions player. Playing remake in part two will make you a worse factions player. Trying to think what else to do. I think I'm just going to go offline. That being said, I, I do. Before we do permadeath and start learning permadeath, I need to make one more video, and that's explaining the differences between console and PC besides just performance. <sighs> I have a list of all the differences. Vic has been helping me, but. How do I want to organize it? Part of me thinks I need to like load up the PC version and just capture footage of the areas that are different being performed and then compare them to console. I think that's what I'm going to end up doing. I think next stream, whenever that is, I'm going to... You know, no alerts, no me talking over it. I, I just need footage of the areas being performed. And then I'll play on console to compare against it. Yeah, I think that's what I have to do. Yeah. That'll probably be on Tuesday. Tomorrow is Laugh of Us Day. That'll be a nice break. But I think on Tuesday, that's when I need to make, like, actually make the video. Yeah. Yeah. Well, regardless, we're getting closer to uh, getting back to normal, normal work, normal days of work. So, alrighty, I'm gonna call it there. Regardless, um, thank you guys for four follows, seven subs, and for putting up with me making all this crap. <laughs> it's good crap, though. It'll be good crap, but yeah. That is it for me. I'm going to go get something to eat. And just uh, tomorrow tomorrow's going to be a stress-free day of Laugh of Us. 
and I think I need to do one stream of just gathering footage from the PC version myself, and then, um... Yeah. That'll give me the rest of tonight and tomorrow to, uh, see exactly how I want to organize it and stuff. Yeah, the hand cam's cool, it's just... Yeah. I'm gonna prefer not having a laundry pole <laughs> next to me. I can technically take this down now because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be using the hand cam for you know, slight gameplay differences. So I can technically take this down. Nice. Here, one last look at my uh my hands. I got big hands. Look. I got big hands. This is how I play. Boop, boop. <laughs> I have a little cut on my, uh, my mi middle finger there. Yeah, this is just what's always been comfortable. It took a little while to go from dual shock to dual sense and be able to do this, but I don't know. This is just what's always been comfortable. I always explain. You want to know why? Yeah, I got one right here. N64 controller. Now you're supposed to play it like this. Apparently, you're supposed to play it like this, right? I never played it like this. Never. I always played it like this. We're talking when I was literally an adolescent, okay? Six, seven, eight, nine years old. Even into adulthood. I always played it like this. I don't know if I'd use the index finger for this. Normally, you don't have to do this and this at the same time. That was never required, but I always moved... It's not that I always did it like this, but I, I'd i use my index finger for down and then my thumb for up. And then I think I'd use both for left and right. But I never use this for just the thumb. And I'd, I'd use my thumb for this. I don't think I'd... I don't think I'd do, like, claw grip for my right hand, but I would always do it... Yeah, I'd do, I'd do this, and then I'd use my thumb for everything else. But yeah, I'd always used to grip it like this. I think I used my ring finger for L. We're talking like when I was really young, okay? It just always kind of... Kind of translated over. Yeah, that controller right there, I think it came with my N64. So that thing's got to be like 26 years old or something. <laughs> you still play? Not really. I have games, I have controllers, I have consoles. I just... The reason I don't play other stuff is because I know when I do, it's going to be that much harder to return to feeling comfortable with this. When I was, like, on the verge of getting my 23901 in this game, I was having so much fun. <laughs> I was having... I was having fun with the process of it. I knew I was close. I knew it could be any day, and then it happened, and then I'm like, fuck yeah. Worth it. Totally worth it. It's all about getting all these good performances on... on video, on, in a recording, and then it's there forever, you know? Lately, I've been going back and watching my t parts of my 247. There's so many things that went right. I don't think I, I, I don't think I can watch Ranch in Winter, but like everything else, I can gladly just watch. Yeah.
I'm always just like stretching out my hands, fingers. Anything to avoid a carpal tunnel surgery. <laughs> Which I'm sure is waiting for me when I get older. Hopefully not, though. I don't really know where we stand with part two all collectibles. That is about as further... That is about as far away from my area of expertise than it can possibly be. Yeah. That being said, I do have all collectibles record on the original. I just have a certain comfort with the original. Uh, I'm tired. Alright, I want to get something to eat. Alright, tomorrow's Laugh of Us. Tuesday will be another video making stream. And, uh... There'll probably be two streams on Tuesday. One to get the footage that I need. And another to, um actually record the video so yeah oh god we're done i'm gonna go offline and upload this but thank you guys and i will uh new strats for all collectibles Nah, you can have it <laughs> oh god you can have it thank you guys for watching like i said tomorrow's laugh of us Tuesday will be more video making. Should only be one day. And yeah. Then when that is finished, we shall begin learning, not doing, but learning permadeath. It shouldn't take too long. There's only so much that's different. Yeah. Oh, okay. Take care, everyone. I'll see you next time. Or I'll see you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow with Laugh of Us. Are you going to get me? Are you not going to get me? Who knows? Just tune in to find out. <laughs> All right. Take care. Bye. Two different hands. Bye. Wait. Let's... Other way. There we go. Nope. Bye. <laughs> Bye.